because we desperately need you in our life, to guide us within our families, to direct us. Even in our nation, we need your guidance and we need you. So God, I pray that you would give us wisdom as we lead out in our areas. But Lord, let the things we say and the things we do be from you. That our desperation to have you lead area of every area of our life would be demonstrated to other people, that they would see you in us. We cling to you and you only today. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, church, today we're talking about kids and how unruly they are and how they need to clean their rooms. And no, I'm kidding. We're not going to get in there. But I will tell you, kids, parents, close your ears, kids, I get it. Sometimes you're like, man, if I could just get mom and dad, you know, I, they just need to listen. I got such a great idea. Well, I found a video of a kid teaching other kids how to help lead their parents into better decision making. So with that being said, y'all check out this kid's strategy. Come on, buddy. It's almost time for bed. Don't let this happen to you. I'm going to teach you how to get what you want from your parents. Let's do that again. Dad, I really missed you today. Can we share a bowl of ice cream and talk about our day? Sure, buddy. Yes! You've got to figure out what's important to your parents. For Dad, it's quality time. And for Mom, it's something else. Mom, can I play my video game? Honey, you already played your video game today. Uh, let's do that again. Mama, can I do that for you so you can take a nap? That is so sweet of you. Yes, thank you, honey. Thank you, I love you. And when I'm done, I'll gladly play my video game. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. You gotta figure it out yourself. Got it? Got it. Go get it. <laughs> hey, Dad, will you play with fire? What? Ugh, beginners. Sometimes it helps to have a little inside tips and tricks on how to kind of get your parents to say yes. Um, but I don't care how gullible your parents are. They're probably not going to go with the, hey, let's play with fire one. So just count that one off the list, kids. With that being said, we're talking about kids today. With that, we're going to go back and forth between kids and parents. Um, so when I talk about kids, kids lean in. Uh, when I talk about parents, kids lean in as well, um, because one day you might be a parent. So with that being said, let's start right out on the gate. Uh, first thing is first, and the first point in your, your bulletin, if you're taking notes, is kids, I want you to know this. You are a gift from God. You are absolutely a gift from God. Psalms 123 says, or 127 verse 3 says this, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. When it comes to says a heritage, sometimes it's translated a blessing. You are a gift. You are a blessing from the Lord. Every time a child has been born, everyone wants to hold the baby. And they want a picture with it. Sometimes it can get a little dicey. That's why we talked about family last week. Because sometimes it's like, it's the grandchild. Well, who gets to hold the, the grandchild first? Clearly, like, the baby is born. They're going to put him on, you know, mom's chest. And then it's like, does dad get to hold him next? Is it, is it the, the mom of the, the mom? It was it the mom of the dad? Like, like, what's the pecking order? What's the order? Who gets to hold the baby first? And sometimes there's, like, conversations over that. Like, just so you know, dad, like, you're going to go last. and you're Because Why? People celebrate life, and children are a heritage of the Lord. Kids, you are important. Despite how you feel, this is what God's word says. I know there are times, kids, that we as parents, we overstep our bounds. We say things in a moment of lack of self-control, and we respond in a way that is not in a way that God has desired for us to, and we mess up. We say things that we shouldn't say. We, we say things to the point where the anvil crushes that spirit of that child. And I want you to know, kids, when we as adults, when we do that, we know. We, we, we know we've crossed the line. We know we've messed up. But that does not change what God's word says about you. 
you are a gift from God. Parents, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how many times you've answered the question and your answer is still no, I want you to know, don't lose your cool. You're looking and we're talking to a gift from God. I get it, you're tired. I get it, you're frustrated. I get it, you may be even disappointed or even hurt or angry or frustrated in the situation that you're navigating in, but that does not change who this person is. This is your child. This is your grandchild. They are a gift from the Lord. So let's be careful of the way we say things and how we would say things from this blessing that God has given us. Now, there will be times in our life where we as parents, we hurt our kids' feelings. We hurt them, maybe it was an accident, and sadly sometimes because we're fallible, we've done it on purpose. We lost our control and we said, you know what, I'm just gonna give them a taste of their own medicine. And we say things that we know that would not honor or glorify God, and we know this is not something to be profitable, but because we were fallible, because we messed up, we still sometimes cross that line. Can I just encourage you, every parent here, when that moment happens, do three things. First one is pause. Second, repent. And the third thing is reconcile. Pause, repent, and reconcile. No one's saying you're perfect. So don't walk around and act like you are perfect. When you mess up, when we cross that line and we say things and go, mm, that's, and you see the reaction and you're thinking, that's not where I was getting, that's not what I was hoping for. Just pause, repent, and then reconcile. Because here's the beautiful thing. You're gonna make mistakes. Kids, your parents are gonna make mistakes. They're gonna, oh, they're gonna step the line, they're gonna forget things, they're gonna do things and it's gonna hurt. It's just, it, we are human beings and we mess things up sometimes, sometimes a lot. But here's a beautiful thing, mom and dad, if you will model this for your kids, your kids will model it in their own lives. Because when they start doing things and they mess up, they're gonna go, you know what? They're gonna pause, they're gonna repent, and they're gonna reconcile. Why? Because it was modeled for them by the parents. It's not just this whole, well, you know what, it's just all your fault to begin with because I already asked you three times and you didn't. So the fact that I lost my temper, lost my cool, and I said something that hurt your feelings, it's really all your fault to begin with. No. This is a gift from God. Let's walk in that. Let's treat it as such. And when we mess up, let's just admit it. Let's pause, repent, and reconcile. We go to our kids and say, you know what, that dad should have never said that. That's not what I meant when I said X, Y, and Z. That's not what I meant. And I know it hurt you, and I'm sorry for this. Pause, repent, and reconcile. Because moms and dads, you desire that from your kids. When they say, oh, yeah, this is what I did, and you're like, that's not what we have designed for you. You've broken a family rule. You've broken God's command, whatever it is. You want your children to come to you and say, I messed up, and I'm sorry. And so we have to model that for them. It's not because I'm the parent and I said so and I don't make mistakes because I write the rules. It's a, I'm a child of God just as you are and I'm here to model what this is for you. And I want you to know you are a gift of God. And sometimes these moments have created a strange relationship between mom and dad and there's a separation and there's this distance and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we forget that this precious baby that we held in our hands the moment we were like, this is a gift of God. When they are a teenager or a young adult and there becomes a sass and a hip thrust or whatever that comes along with it, they are still a gift from God. Second thing is this. Kids, three things. Listen, trust, and obey your parents. Listen, trust, and obey your parents. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 4 says this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Children, obey 
your parents. I promise you, the Holy Spirit is a lot better at redirecting them than you. In youth ministry, I would deal with kids, and they would, they would say, Paul, you don't understand. My relationship with my parents is just severed. It's broken. Like, they walk in a room, I'm walking out. They say, what are you doing? I'm not responding. I mean, we have a broken, I can't stand my parents. Matter of fact, what I want to do is move in with someone else. And there's a strained relationship. And 100% of the time, I'd look at them and say, here's, what I, my, here's my suggestion how to, how to heal things and fix things. You ready for this? And they're like, what? I'm like, obey your parents. I said, I want you to try this. And 100% of the time, I got 100% of the results. I looked at them and said, I want you for, for one week. We're, Wednesday night, I'm going to pray for you and your mom and dad. I said, here's the deal. When you leave with Wednesday night, I want you every single time your parents ask you to do something, you say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, and I want you to get it done. And I want you to report to me what your home life is like in the next week. When they say, hey, do you have any homework? Don't go, I don't know. Say, let me look real quick. You honor them, you respect them, and you obey them. You do those things immediately and report to me in one week and see what happens. 100% of the time that a kid took me up on that, they came back and said, wow, things have totally transformed my life. My mom and I, my dad and I, I mean, we're getting along so great. It's like, interesting. And I asked him this question before we'd, I'd set the challenge. I said, do you think your parents are perfect? They're like, I know they're not. I said, do you think you have a pretty good idea on some things your parents could probably do differently that would make the home life probably a little easier, a little more kinder, more simpler, whatever? They're like, absolutely. I say, next question. Do you believe that God is able to lead them better or do you believe you would be able to lead them better? Oh, well, well God would be. Okay. So let's do this. Why don't you, as a 13-year-old teenager, Trust God that he will lead your mom and dad, and you do what God's word says to do. I want you to listen. I want you to trust them. I want you to obey them. That way, the Holy Spirit can speak to them about what's going on in their life, because I promise you this, as a parent, when my kid disobeys me, I'm not, my first response is, Lord, what are, you, what are you saying to me right now? It's, I need to correct the issue. I have disobedience, and I need to correct the, the issue at hand. And so as a parent, I become more focused on correcting the situation or redirecting my kid than listening and responding to the Holy Spirit. I said, I promise you, if you'll take one week and just say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and you are obedient, and you do what your parents have asked you, you treat them with respect, you honor them, God will have a little bit clear channel in leading and guiding your parents in that moment. And 100% of the time, every one of those kids came back to me and said, you don't understand, things in my house have been just awesome. I got back to Nintendo, I got back to the Xbox, I get to drive again. Like, all these things were just transformed, and all they did was this. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. Because here's the deal, kids. It's not about just doing what mom and dad said. It's about honoring God. It's that I know that God is leading my parents, and my parents are leading me. And my way to honor my father and mother, as we said last week, when you were a child, the best way you honor your father and mother is through obedience. The way you honor your father and mother as they are older is through faithfulness. So, kids, listen, trust, and obey. Proverbs 22, 6 tells us this. Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Church, I want you to know this is a proverb, not a promise. I don't know how many times people come to me and they say, well, pastor, you don't understand. Every, we were in the church every Sunday and every Wednesday, and yet here's where we are. As a, as, a, as a family. I want, you know, my heart breaks when, when I hear these, these types of stories. But let me encourage you, parents who are on this end of raising your kids, don't make church a priority. Make Jesus a priority. There's a big difference. You can be here every Sunday and every Wednesday and every time you can be here all the women pickleball nights, you can go to all the men's retreats, you can do all the women's retreats. But if every Sunday you're scrambling to go, hey, where are our Bibles? We're going to church. Where's our Bibles? Does anyone see our Bibles? Like, well, they, we usually keep them here, Mom. I know, but we had company come over and we moved them. Does anyone know where the Bibles are? Guess what? You can make church attendance a priority all day long. But until we make Jesus the priority, then church will be in the right spot. It's not about just being here every, every Sunday. It's about walking him with all the other six days of the week, not just this morning. Train up a child the way he should go isn't about showing up every time the church doors are open. 
It's about Deuteronomy 6, when my kids get up, when they lie down, when we walk across the road, when we, to put it in modern stance, when we're going to soccer practice, when we're in the McDonald's drive-thru, we're picking them up from school, those are the times we talk about Jesus. So we make him a priority. Not just showing up for a church, not just checking a box, but walking with the Lord. If you don't make Jesus a priority in the home, making church attendance a priority for your kids will be part of, I mean, sorry, if you make Jesus a priority, church attendance will be a part of that. But we don't just sit there and go, we need to get to church, we need to get to church, we need to walk in the Spirit, we need to walk with Jesus. Exodus 20, 12 says this, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord God has given you. Kids, I want you to know your parents sacrifice more for you than you'll ever know. There are things they go without. There are things they give up. There are prayers that they pray. There are nights they don't go to sleep. They do so much more than just tell you no and rob you of all the joy of life. I promise you, I didn't think my mom knew any other words growing up. I thought for all the times I was a little kid saying no, 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 she kept a tally sheet. And she's like, for every time he tells me no, then when he turns 13 and starts asking for things, I'm going to see his no and I'm going to raise him a no. That's how I felt growing up. My parents won't let me have any fun. They won't let me go. Everyone else is going to be at the party. And they all need to just suck all the joy and all the fun out of my life. I, had, I was a kid at, as, as a 16-year-old, had a, had a 9 o'clock curfew. I got a driver's license. We get out of school on a Friday. We want to go see a movie. Guess what? We have to go to the 6 o'clock movie because the, by the time it's over with, I have to be back home at 9. All my other friends had 11, 12 o'clock curfews, not me. I didn't get to hang out with anyone. And then later on, as I got to be a senior, my parents were like, guess what? No curfew for you. And I was like, well, there's no point in going out. All my friends lost their privileges, and they can't go out anymore. My parents saved me from a lot of things that I didn't realize in the moment. When I thought I was missing out, they were really protecting me. Kids, the word tells us, honor your father and mother. They've sacrificed more for you than you'll ever know. So guess what? Be careful on how we respond. Because honoring them isn't just saying yes because you can say, hey, we tear out trust. I guess so. Yeah, I'll do it. Is that honoring? No. You may have done what you need to do. You may have followed through with the right action. I took the trash out. What more do you want? I want you to honor me. So kids, listen to your parents. Trust your parents. I get it. It doesn't make sense to you. And yeah, I get it. It was 100 years when before, you know, ago before they were your age. And society's not the same thing. You have a phone. They didn't. They don't have any idea what you're going through. They have a pretty good idea. But you're right. They don't know everything. So you know what? Why don't you fill in the gaps for them? Why don't you sit down with them, hang out with them, and share with them, Mom, Dad, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. Instead of having them guess for everything. Parents, your kids are a gift from God. Steward this gift well. Be careful how we speak and how we respond. And when we do, let's pause, repent, and reconcile. Kids, listen. Trust them and obey them. Second, third thing is this. Kids, make a decision to follow Jesus. It is the most important decision you will ever make on this earth. And outside of that decision, we'll determine all the other decisions. Well, what about, you know, what job I'm going to do, what major I'm going to have, and who I'm going to marry? All those will be a factor of the importance of your walk with the Lord. And if you today, as a kid, you've never said, I have professed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I, have, I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my ways, and I turn to him. If you've never gone to a point to do that, I want to encourage you to do that today. And by the way, I think the first person you should talk to would be your mom and dad. And mom and dad, if you don't feel like you can answer the questions of salvation to your kids, first of all, I want you to know we want to come alongside you. Second of all, store that in the back of your head and start moving towards Jesus. 
When I became a Christian, I, want, I kept telling my parents, I want to get saved, I want to get saved. Well, you got to talk to Pastor Rodney. you got to talk to Pastor Rodney. Well, I, want to, I want to get saved. I know we'll have to talk to Pastor Rodney. My parents, as awesome as they were, missed out on an opportunity to be the ones who said, I led my son to the Lord. My son had questions about Jesus, and I answered them. It wasn't that they didn't know Bible things. My dad's a deacon, and my mom and dad, they taught Sunday school. They felt like that was the pastor's job. It was the church's responsibility in that area. And I want to tell you, it's the home. It's the home where your kids learn to love Jesus most and what worship looks like. Matthew 19, 14 says this, But Jesus said, Let the little ones, little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is making invitation that children should come to know who he is. Parents, it's the home where your kids should hear about Jesus first and most. Think about it this way. If we make church a priority and my kids are always in children's ministry, they're always in youth ministry, then on Sunday morning they were with Lachelle, Robbie, and Deborah for one hour. They were in, in small groups for one hour. Then on Wednesday night they're here for an hour and a half. They're in there for two and a half hours. Let's just round it up to three. Three hours a week is what our programming aligns to in your home. To kind of equate that, the average person in this room, depending on the 46, 281 traffic, will spend that amount of time, if not more, just taking your kids to school and picking them up from school. You leave at the house at 7.15, you're at school by 7.45, and you pick them up, and it's a 30-minute trip home. That's not include soccer practice or softball practice or gymnastics or dance team or you know, debate or band or any of those other things you take your kids to. What a precious time to spend with your kids is in the car, talking about Jesus. Beautiful thing about the car is you don't, if some of you are weird about eye contact, parents are driving on the road, you can ask the questions and they can have it, their head kind of buried down here, they're worried about that weird eye contact, but make that a priority because guess what? The best decision your kids will ever decide to do will be to follow Jesus. And we need to maximize every bit of time we have with our kids. The dinner table, talking about the Lord, talking about what God is doing. And by the way, it will be modeled by you. Because they'll hear conversations about what God is doing in your life and how God's speaking to you about things at work and how he's challenging you. And your kids will see God working in your life and they're going to want God to start working in their life. Tell them about Jesus. Teach them about Jesus. And if you've never made a profession to follow him, a decision to follow him, today would be a great day to do that. Romans 10, 9, and 10 tells us that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. It says, for the heart was believed and is justified with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Which is why when we do baptism, we say, do you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Yes. We confess it because why? This is a public demonstration of what's happened in this person's life. And we believe from that point forward, they are going to be professing their faith to other people Let's start in the church and let's carry it to the streets. Make a decision to follow Jesus. Last thing is this. Kids, listen, trust, and obey God. Yeah, you listen, trust, and obey your parents. Now you're going to listen, trust, and obey God. Parents, one of the most challenging moments in a kid's life and their faith is because they grow up and you're the parent and you speak to them and say this is what you should do this is right this is wrong and they're supposed to obey you in the lord this is their commandment from god is to follow you then they come to a point in time where they see god working in your life and they see who jesus is by the conversations the the relationship you have with them and they say i want what my parents have i want to walk with jesus and then the holy spirit comes inside of their life and now the Holy Spirit begins to speak to them. And I've talked to the parents, and I've even felt this in my own life. It's like when my kids were younger and I'd pray, God would give me clarity and God would give me direction. It's like, this is what's best for your kid. This is what they should do. This is what they shouldn't do. And as they got older, my prayers became a little more unclear with God speaking back to me, and here's why. The Holy Spirit was in charge in leading their life. They're not going to always live in my house, underneath my roof, and listen to my rules and do what I ask them to do. I want the Holy Spirit to lead their life. Because Titus, or sorry, uh, 3 John 
1, 4 says this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Parents, you think, it's, you think it's great when you say, hey, I need you to clean your room. And they go, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And they go do it. You think that's great? Wait till you're sitting at the kitchen table and your kids are older teenagers or young adults. And they're like, hey, I was praying this last week. And this is what I believe God has done. Oh, I was reading in my Bible. And this is what God has spoken to me. This is, I've made this a priority. And God's challenged and spoke to my heart that I need to repent of this. And they need to give this over to him. You want to have, you think it's great to say, take out the trash, and they go, yes, ma'am, and they go, and have your heart sing for joy. Oh, my goodness, look, how hard was that? You think that's joyful? There's no greater joy than when we hear that our kids are walking in the truth. And by the way, moms and dads, they're not going to get there just by you dragging them to church. Can I tell you that there, you know, everybody talks about the statistic of young adults who leave the church after high school. Can I tell you a statistic that hasn't been done, but I think should be done? In 20 years of youth ministry, I've seen just as many moms and dads leave the church once their kids got in high school as high schoolers left the faith after high school. And our kids made a decision to follow the Lord. They're Christians. Now they're involved in all these activities. Guess what? We're just going to make church less of a priority. And here's the reason why. The reason why we're able to do that because Jesus was less of a priority to begin with. I've seen more moms and dads bail out of church, or just as many moms and dads bail out of church as I've seen kids. And by the way, things in our homes, they're going to be caught, not taught. We as parents can talk all day long, but if our lives do not line up with what we're talking about, our kids know the difference. And it shouldn't be a shock to us when we see them pick something different because you know what? Apple probably doesn't fall too far from the tree. If we can't find our Bible from Sunday to Sunday, we shouldn't be a shock when our kids can't find their Bible from Sunday to Sunday either. When our kids talk and back talk and have sass and they're arguing and spouting, maybe we should take a look back and say, how do I respond to my spouse when she asks me to do something? Hey, do you mind taking out the trash? Are you kidding me? Gosh, why can't we get one of the kids to do it? Blah, blah, blah. How, what if we just took a little bit and looked at ourselves in the mirror when we looked at things we see in our home? Because see, the reality is, younger, yes, kids, obey your parents. For this, do this in the Lord. But for us as mom and dad, we need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Always. And if we want our kids to walk with the Lord, as John says, greater and joy than my children are walking with the Lord. If we want our kids to walk with the Lord, the best thing we can do is we walk with the Lord as well. So kids, one of the greatest things you can do is make a decision for Jesus. And once you've done that, is to listen, trust, and obey him. You say, well, Paul, when, when does that transition occur? There's not an age. There's not a time frame in life. What I do know is there's a point in time where a kid looks and says, here's what I know about Jesus. He died and he saved me, and I put my trust in him. And then becomes a sanctification and a growing process. We start getting closer to Jesus and we start trusting him more. And then God began to speak to us as we read his word. By the way, the best place to hear the Lord speak is the word of God. It's the revealed revelation. That's what it is, the revelation of who God is versus just kind of going, hey, God, and just praying. We, we already know his desires for our life. We already know what he's commanded us to do. It's through his revealed word right here. And God begins to speak. We listen to him. And we obey him. So kids, best thing you do is learn to get in the word. And if you don't know how, talk to your parents. Mom and dad, if your kids ask you how to read the Bible and you take a big old gulp, just take a deep breath and go, you know what? We're going to work on that. Because what you don't want to do is like, you know, that's a conversation you should have with Lachelle. You should talk to Robbie about that. No, they came to the right person. They came to you. You're their parent. And if we can't, we want to come alongside you. These ministries, Robbie, Lachelle, Deborah, we want to come alongside the family, not deroot the kids and then go put them back in the family. We just want to come alongside. We want to be a reinforcement. Just a reminder, kids, through the good days, through the bad days, through the times parents we've lost self-control, understand this, you are a gift. Despite what has happened to you in the past, despite the baggage you may be carrying, I want you to know you are a gift from God. The word of God tells us you are. And we believe that. So with that, make a decision to follow Jesus. Trust, listen, and obey your parents. And once you have the Holy Spirit living in you, start 
listening to the Lord. Listen to him, obey him, and follow him. So with that being said, we've got one who's come with us today to make his faith public. And we have Mr. Rhett Morgan and his dad, John. John wasn't with us last week because he had just getting back from a mission trip. He was in Brazil, um, one of our crews in Brazil. And so this is a special time. So Rhett, let me ask you in front of everyone here today, do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? And you've put your hope and your trust in him for the forgiveness of those sins, correct? Yes, then it's a privilege for your dad to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, church, God continues to give us reasons to celebrate who he is and what he's done. So with that being said, let's all stand to our feet and let's sing Shout to the Lord this morning. All right, well, um, since this is back to school season, we wanted to offer a prayer and um, a scripture over all of our teachers and kids going back to school, whether that is elementary, middle school, high school, college. Would y'all just join us up at the front now um, and we can have just a minute of prayer over you. Thank you, youth, for leading the way. Good job. Homeschool, private school, public school, all the schools. Seminary. Seminary. Yeah. Garabi. <laughs> There's a lot of um, scary things, great things, exciting things coming up. And we just feel as a church family how what a privilege for us to gather together, pray over you as you go out into the community in school. So first I want to read a passage from Proverbs. Solomon was giving some wisdom for families and especially um, young people in Proverbs 3. My son and daughters, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you, but bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Amen. Man, I'm so excited. I shared with this in the first service. I just want to share and just a reminder for each and every one of you guys right now. Y'all are missionaries. Like, recognize that. You are missionaries about to go and be sent out on the mission field. Many of you guys have already started this week. I know some of your teachers doing teacher in service. You guys already started back in the craziness. But you are missionaries to be gone, to be sent out, and to go and share the good news of Jesus with everybody. So keep that in mind as you're jumping back into school that your purpose is bigger than just growing in your knowledge, but it is communicating the truth and the love of Jesus through building relationships, building friendships with people, right? But also sharing the good news of Jesus with every person that you encounter, whether it's the lunch lady or it's your friend on the bus or your teachers or just maybe your friends in class. So look for those opportunities, okay? I'm going to pray for us right now and then we'll read some scripture and we'll be sent out here. Lord, thank you again so much for this wonderful, amazing opportunity that we have to be missionaries for you, to be sent out, to go and communicate the love and truth of your son Jesus to everyone that we encounter. I pray for these students, these teachers, these administrators, these uh, people, your creation, Father. Bless them. Give them eyes to see. Give them hearts that are going to be able to communicate your love. Give them the knowledge that they are going to be able to remember and retain your word in order to communicate it back 
to everyone and to demonstrate through word and deed the love of your son, Jesus, Father. Bless them, allow them to have a great night's sleep or safe travels or even just getting all their things together for the start of this amazing year that you have planned for them, Father. Bless us and we glorify your name on high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We've got a scripture verse up here that we're going to read before we leave, guys. But before we do that, I just want to encourage you, church family, we're going to have some deacons up here at the front and their wives. I encourage you to come and share some prayer requests with them. If you have any questions about maybe it's how do I become a member of our church or how can I jump in and help out and serve in different ministries, come and talk with them. Go check out the Next Step area as well if you're new. We'd love to have some information about you so we can contact you, love on you a little bit, and encourage you in the way that you should go, and that's always to center ourselves on Jesus. But thank you so much for worshiping as a community of believers together, and we can't wait to see what the Lord has planned over this fall semester into the beginning of a 2025 year. Isn't that crazy? We're almost there. So let's go ahead and read the scriptures together. Here we go. This is Ephesians 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Church, you are sent. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Let's go ahead and read the scriptures together. Here we go. This is verse 10. It says,